Okay, this is part two of the tutorial now. We've built our basic piece, which is the lower leg. From this we're going to start working to build ourselves the actual claw unit that's at the bottom that it's going to walk on, and also presumably rend things apart, you know? So, <coughs> what we need to do now is just smooth this object out a little bit, so I'm going to use some Nerm subdivision. Just one iteration. Now if you look, we do that. I'm going to rotate around my object, and some of the rivets are standing out from it. We don't want that. We want to still maintain the edges we've got. So we're going to click separate by smoothing groups and materials. Even though we haven't assigned any smoothing groups, it will still put the edges back on our model more or less. And then just collapse the stack down. Okay. Looks fine. Now, by doing that, what we've also done is opened up our model so that we can do some work on it. I'll explain what I mean in just a second. So, what I want to do now is I want to select this part here, which is going to become the actual, um, oh, what's it called? Claw area. So, what I've got is I've got lasso selection region on. So, I'm going to change that to normal select. I'm just going to go around and select these objects here. And I should be able to just click grow once. There we are. And I now have the entire piece that I want to detach from this model. So I'm just going to click detach now. And I'm going to name this piece Claw 01. There we go. Okay, so now with that done, let's have a look underneath. I'm going to select it and unhide everything else. Sorry, hide everything else. And that leaves us just this one nice piece here to play with. Okay, so how am I going to develop the claw from this? Well, I know what the claw is going to look like roughly. So I've got two options. One is that I draw it in a spline and attach it, which is going to be the easier option to be quite honest. And the other being that I make it as a poly model. So I think you already know what I'm going to do here, and that's splines. So if I look at my object here, I'm going to turn grid on, then I can use my snap to settings. That's my snap toggle there. And I'm going to drop down into my splines. I'm going to start with a line, which is always the best place to begin. And I'm just going to flesh out the overall shape of this knife thing, which is the big claw. There we go. And that gives us the shape of our claw that we want. Now what I'm going to do is go over here to our modifiers and select all these pieces except these two end ones here. Just right click, turn to smooth. Now these two here I'm going to turn back to corners. There we are, that'll give us a nice sharper defined edge here. Just go around our model doing a couple of adjustments. There we go. I'm going to change this one to a corner too. I'm also going to move this corner a bit, I think. There we go. So now we've got the shape of our claw here. So we can extrude it out a bit. So, I'm going to drop into my perspective viewport here. And in my perspective viewport, if I just turn around a little bit, I'm going to hit, oh, hang on, turn my selection off. I'm going to hit extrude. And now I can take it out as much or as little as I want. Now remember, 50 is the width of the entire thing. So if we make it round about 35, there we go, and make it two segments, then right click, convert to editable polygon. This will enable us to make a blade down the inside here. cunning. Okay, so I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to zoom in a bit and what I want to do is select all these lines down here. Make sure I haven't got move on otherwise I might accidentally move on by mistake. Also turn off ignore back facing or turn on ignore back facing rather. That is going to select all these ones down the middle.
there we go now I can just use my move tool and get myself a blade shape out and then using the vertex tools I can do some target welding just to refine the actual shape of the blade Okay, now if you look here, we've got this rather unpleasant shape that we want to try and avoid. You can get rid of that just by using a simple cut. So I'm going to cut from this very point here all the way across to this one. Now I can move out this vertex here, which will straighten up this part. Just keep rotating the model, it's best so that you know that you're getting in the right area. There we go. So we've got this right, quite nice sharp hooking thing here. Now just time to start adjusting some of these vertexes in. And for anyone who hasn't used 3D Studio Max 6 before, I do recommend rather than just diving into a more complicated tutorial like this one, perhaps you might want to start with the basics which can be found on my website. Just go into the 3D Studio Max, the single tutorials area, and if you look in there, you'll find lots and lots of slightly easier level tutorials that will be more useful for you if you want to just start off, you know? Okay, let's do another vertex target weld. Start trimming these in. Get rid of some of these vertexes we're not using. go. Now if we look we want to do another line just to cut straight down so I'll turn this off. I'm going to cut from this corner here all the way down to about here. That'll straighten this piece out and the same again over here. There we go. So as you see now our claw is definitely coming together. Zoom out a bit. zoom in on this end a good look at it <coughs> and I think what we'll want to do with this is make a nice sharp point but we're going to want to have it kind of curved up a bit so if I extrude this let's turn it in a bit and then extrude it one more time there we go now I'm going to do a target weld over here. Let's get this changed over so they can see properly. Bring this one in. Sometimes it's easy just using a collapse if you're not having any luck with Target World. And just straighten it up yourself. There we go. Now, if you pull back, we have this rather nice shape here for this big kind of. It's a walking claw, really. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is drop back in the left viewport here. Turn that off. Now I want to affect the pivot point on this to make it more central to this piece here. So what I'm going to do is affect pivot and align it to this object. Now then, I'm going to move 
smooth pivot right up here. There we are. Let's get it central to that. Now this one I want to also center to the object. There we go. Now I'm just going to rotate this up a bit. There we go. And that's our claw, pl claw put into place. Now, go to our perspective viewport. Now, in the attachment, we only want to use two polygons on each side really to do the attaching. So, the easiest way to do that will be if I select this piece, which is called Chloro 1, and just attach this lump here. I'm going to select this polygon, then zoom it. That way I can see it better. Okay, now I'm going to delete that one and that one. Oops, I'm also going to delete that one there. So that's going to be our link from here to here. Now I can just create a new one. Now this takes a little bit of concentration because you don't want to be accidentally linking the wrong vertexes. So if you're not sure which one you're linking up, just take a few seconds to have a good look. I'm going to create two triangles here. And then one triangle just connecting up to the top to fill in the gap. Gives me a slightly nicer shape. Now then, over here, you can see the shape again. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it over. Just do it as one big polygon down here. There we go. And now as you see, we've got this claw piece attached already. And it's all one solid element because we've linked it together using polygons. So now, if I am to unhide, which I'll just do quickly, I'm going to unhide all. you'll see that our claw now at the bottom there is linked into this piece here so what I'm going to do is add some details on the back of this not many just a couple I'm probably not even going to bother with the rivets so let's just select these in the round here make sure we haven't moved anything by mistake just going to inset it. There we are. Then I'm going to extrude it in. Then I'm going to inset it again. I'm going to make a nice large ankle piece here. There we go. Let's get this ankle piece in. There we go. And inset it in. and then extrude it back again gives us a nice slightly more complicated joint there we go and then extrude it back again all we're doing really is adding details that will come out better in rendering there we go and now if we turn this around you'll see that oops hang on when I come to rotate it, it rotates nicely on our bearing. Possibly a little bit of editing down here, but we can fill that in with a cap. Or we can just limit the amount of room taken for the actual move of the claw. Oops, hang on. There we go, as you see.
let's move our claw back into position there. Okay, so we've got our first claw put in. Now what we're going to want to look at here next is possibly adding a little bit of detail to it. How do I mean by the detail? Well, we've added a bit already, but we could do with something to... Well, basically what we could do here with is some hydraulic hoses, for the simple reason that hydraulic hoses look nice. So, I'm not going to add one there, I don't think yet. But maybe add some up near the top to connect it to the next leg. Also put in some more pistons, because pistons always look good. Okay, so let's look at what we've covered so far then. Drop into the left viewport. Zoom extents. Press G, press F4 so we can see it properly. Now then, this part here we could probably do with smoothing down a little bit. If we were to stick one iteration on smooth by smoothing group, let's have a quick look at it. Now let's see what funky things our polygons are going to do to it. If you look closely, we're starting to get some artefacts down here because of the polygons we had to create. And also because of it being an extruded shape, just from a spline, there's no separating polygons going on down here. You can't really smooth this kind of shape. I mean, if you use a mesh smooth, it's just going to make a hideous mess. Tessellate doesn't really do much either because of these large side areas here. If you're going to want to smooth it down, the only thing really you can do is start separating out the polygons first. Once you've separated out the polygons at the side here, what I mean is, hang on, using the cut tool, literally to cut yourself all the polygons in this big area here, then you can smooth it. Till then though, you're pretty much stuffed. I'm not going to cover that at the, mo at the moment. If you want to do that though, it isn't hard. What I am going to do though is slam a smooth modifier on this. And then just collapse my stack. That's going to make it render a little bit smoother. There we go. So we've got our big claw on the end now. Okay then, so I hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial, again. In the next part we're going to cover making the upper leg including the large ball joint. Once we've covered making the ball joint, we're going to move on to actually attaching it to the rest of the model. So until then, I bid you farewell, and I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.